but um, some of them have been. Uh, see, the standard. Hebrew text used by biblical scholars is the, the Leningrad text. I think it's from the 11th century AD. So are you yeah, doing I'm something else? No, I'm finding a quote to see. Because you're, to, to, it sounds to, like you're doing something online. No, I'm basically just trying to find a scholarly quote where they give the accuracy. So, okay. it's, so it's not a big Well, maybe the scholars just uh, agree. But, but I mean, I, I said that... Uh, because that's why when I said 99% you disagree so Oh absolutely, it. yeah, because it's not true. Uh, well, everyone knows that. I mean, it, the, uh, the, uh, some texts have been, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls contains most of the biblical books and some of them uh, very closely resemble the, the, the Leningrad text that we have, which is the standard text used by biblical scholars today, by translators I mean. But there are other texts that were in the Dead Sea that were quite different. Uh, for example, Jeremiah, um, has a, a much shorter, or is it? No, I think it's much. I, I need to check this, mm. but it's not the same book. Uh, the contents has different chapters, additional or less. I forget which yeah. than the one we have today, and and also there are huge, there are big discrepancies between them. According to Professor Bart Ehrman, who is an expert on the biblical text. Yeah. So I guess my so, my query was to the percentage because I said well, 99%. I, 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 I don't know the percentage, but um, they. Uh, I, I get the impression from Bart Ehrman that it's it's much lower than that, and it's a popular myth that somehow the Dead Sea Scrolls confirmed the Torah we have. Indeed, that he's quite clear that that's not the case. It is in some books, but not in others, and they're radically different ones. But also, it's, as you, to use your expression, it's a moot point, because the New Testament writers didn't use that anyway. They didn't quote from it. They quoted from an entirely different book called the Septuagint, which is an often extremely faulty translation of the Greek, of the Hebrew Bible. And uh, uh, esteemed scholars like James Barr from Oxford, who's a professor of the Hebrew Bible, have said that in, in many passages the, the the Torah has been woefully mistranslated, it's a very poor translation. But the, that very wording has been used by the biblical writers, uh, quoted, even though it's a very bad... So this would be an example of corruption, I would argue. The Quran doesn't say this openly or explicitly, I'm saying this. If you want to see how the Bible has been mistranslated and corrupted, look at the Septuagint again and compare passages from that, which is used by the New Testament, that's its Bible, with the Hebrew Masoretic text, but there are other versions. There are many, many. There's the uh, uh, the Samaritan Pentateuch. There's a Masoretic text, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which you mentioned, and there are other canons, and they don't all agree. There is no single uh, Torah that we know existed, and so when we talk about the Torah today, it's a it is a scholarly reconstruction. We don't actually have a fixed, clear, homogeneous, unified text that we've always agreed is the Torah. It's a scholarly reconstruction. So scholars typically will look at the Masoretic, they'll look at the Septuagint, they'll look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, they'll look at other... If you look at the NRSV, at the critical apparatus at the bottom, it often tells you where this translation or that translation, it comes completely different manuscripts. And, and often, credibly, we have no idea what the words mean anyway. Often they'll say, meaning uncertain, meaning uncertain, we don't even know what the words mean. So when we talk about the Torah, it's a really when you when you dig deeper, it's a really complicated subject. Um, there is no single Torah, and uh, just to just to reiterate, finally, the biblical Torah used by the New Testament is often an extremely poor and inaccurate translation of the Hebrew, whichever Hebrew is used, and it wasn't the Dead Sea Scrolls; it was going to be something else. Um, and it results in faulty quotes. So you have many of the quotes in the New Testament are, are erroneous and faulty. And there's a brilliant one in Hebrews I can mention, which is used to prove a point of doctrine, even though the original Masoretic doesn't say that. Um, and so it's a very uneven uh, uh, and difficult thing to really talk about. So, well, I mean, so you, I'm not surprised you, you, that Quran talks like this. Yeah, well, you, you said a lot of points and I listened. Please go. So, so essentially, because um, when I was looking, well, what, basically, these are heavyweight too. So I looked and it said, for example, uh, comparative study reveal word for word identity in 95% of the text, uh, and that would be more against the Masoretic. Oh, 95. Text. Well, this. Uh, well, you said I mean, 99. Right. And then so, I said 90. So. 
Let's just go with so multiple hang on. <laughs> but, okay. you know... So who, say, who, who is saying this? Uh, I've, just, I've just Googled, so I've just... Yeah, but who is saying this? You've got to just Google it. Yeah, yeah, Google yeah. is not a biblical scholar. Yeah, because I just don't want to sort no. of... No, well, can we stick with Bart Ehrman? Bart Ehrman is a recognised world authority on biblical manuscripts. Shall we Google Bart Ehrman and the Masoretic text and see what he has to say? Well, He's very clear well, that... Well, there's many other scholars, so we... He's, no, but, we're, but, we're but I'm citing about. a scholar. You, have, you cited right. Google. Okay. You could, so Professor I, Google. Yeah, I can give you... <laughs> so... Uh, let me find the, the quote. Sorry, I don't hear your paper, boys. Right, speak up a little bit. Yep. Okay, uh, let me see. So I'm what I'm trying to do is find out the accuracy. Do you, do you agree with that characterization of Bart Ehrman's views on the... I, I've not heard it, so I can't... Um, yeah, well, should, I, should, I should, can't. We, should we Google that now? Let's be clear what Bart Ehrman is saying on this issue. Right. Then also, I think the more important issue here is the way that the New Testament quotes the Torah. It doesn't quote the original Torah. Very, very, no one should dispute this. He quotes from a Greek translation. And the Greek translation, as scholars have been well aware, although most Christians are not aware of this, is occasionally really poor and mangles or misrepresents or even mistranslates the original. And this is not a point that Bart Ehrman alone makes. It's well known amongst Old Testament scholars. So if we're looking for corruption, I think it's, it's the elephant in the room. It's not like uh, what percentage of the Dead Sea Scrolls is faithfully transmitted to our translation. The New Testament itself quotes from a Greek translation, which is often very poor, and it mistranslates mangles or even deliberately distorts, I would argue. I can think of one example in Hebrews, which is an egregious example. I'll, I'll mention it to you, okay? It's a quote from the Psalms. This is in Hebrews chapter 11, where the author of, this, of Hebrews 11 quotes a psalm to prove a point of Christian doctrine, which it says in the psalm, and I'm paraphrasing here because of the top of my head, that God gave his son a body, it's the incarnation to inhabit, that God gave his son a body. So it's, it's talking about the incarnation in Hebrews. But when you look at the original in Hebrew, it says nothing about that at all. It talks about a completely different subject. The point is this, and this is a standard observation, that the New Testament writers have used a distorted mistranslation to create Christian doctrine about the incarnation of Jesus. I mean, this is so central to Christian faith. It is based on a false mistranslation. So I would offer you that specific example for us to discuss now, because we can really hone in in the detail of this and look how the New Testament has corrupted and mistranslated even the Torah they had at the time. So, so that's my challenge well, to you. I'm starting off with the, because my question is initially was about the Torah, not the New Testament. No, but it's um, the New Testament quoting the Torah is what I'm yeah, talking about. But my, my initial point wasn't related yeah, to the But New which Testament. Torah? There's a Septuagint, the Masoretic, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Right. There are lots of Torahs. Yeah. So, so, so it's, it's complicated. Yeah. Your question didn't suggest complexity, but rather kind of a simple, a yeah, simplistic so understanding. That wise thing was when we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I have to find a percentage quote because it'll take I'm too still, much. I'm still waiting for it. Yeah, it will, will take it will take too long. Well, so, I can wait. Yeah, we'll I'll just wait. Have a I'll, I'll wait for your quote because you you've made a, an assertion which okay. you've not been able to back up. Maybe because right. there's a parent, parenthetical. Uh, yeah, so I said essentially. It, 1995% it matches up with the Masoretic no. text. I don't know any scholar who says that. That, that is, is very different because... I've seen, I've seen a quote claim, along those claims lines. like that, yeah. 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 Um, oh, claims, yes, but I'm saying that scholars haven't said this. Uh, I, yeah, I haven't delved into who, who was making the claims specifically, but... It's a common claim, you're absolutely right. Uh, but but it's, 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 it's fake news, it's not true. The, the Dead Sea Scrolls are, very diff are viewed very differently by Jews in relation to their... They have versus how the Dead Sea Scrolls um, yeah. are really yeah. 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 It'll take too long because there's too many links. So anyway, I'll, I'll be here too long because I've been looking already. No, I, I, my, you, you, we came back to what you asked me about the Quran teaches about yes. to corruption about the Torah. I, I'm saying that one example, they're not given by the Quran, which yeah. meets the Quran's allegation, is the one known example in Hebrews chapter 11 where. Um, the, the, the Bible misquotes the Quran to prove points of Christian doctrine. Yes. It's a really serious point, this. And I think that's a good example, they're not detailed by the Quran, of what the Quran is talking about nonetheless. And I'm, I'm offering this as something we can talk about now on camera to discuss what the New Testament has done to the Bible, the Old Testament, because it often misquotes it. And there are many examples. And Paul, for example, if you check...
Paul's quote, the Apostle Paul in his letters, with the Hebrew Bible in a good English translation, like, like the NRSV. What is striking about it, to me, is how often he misquotes it. He doesn't actually have, he, he, he leaves out phrases, or he gives a completely different meaning to it, or he lops off a crucial clause at the end. This is quite typical of Paul. Yeah, but what, sorry to So this is what but, the Quran's but, talking about. But my initial question, because I was more concerned with this, the, the corruption of the Torah. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm talking so, about. Yeah, the corruption not, of the Torah but, in Christian writings. Yeah, but I, I'm not, at the moment, concerned about whether Paul misquoted something or not. So, this is your New Testament. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I wanted to know about the corruption of the Torah, not whether Paul misquoted no, something. No, the question not. is, did the Jews corrupt the Torah? Yeah. Paul was a Jew. Okay, you agree with that, don't you? Yeah. So we have an example here of an actual known historical Jew corrupting the Torah, and we have evidence in your hand now in the New Testament. And I can prove it to you if you'd just like to check. We can do this experiment now. So, so what is your... So I've given, you, I've given you an example of Jews actually corrupting the Torah, and you say, I'm so not talking Paul, about that. Paul was misquoting. Yes. It's easy to demonstrate. Right. So that's, again, but if he's misquoting, I'm talking about textual corruption. So am I. So am I. That is textual no, corruption. If misquoting he's, changing the, he's changing the text. Means, no, misquoting, I, to be specific, what I'm saying is Muslims claim there was an original Torah. Yes. And at some point this got lost in history. Well, not, that's not what I said. I, no, no, that's not true. No, but I'm... That's not true. That's not what I said. I'm not saying that's what I you, did, I, I never said say, it got lost I in never, history. I never said you said that. No, you said I Muslims said, say that. And that's the generals not, are general claim. No, they don't. Because, okay. Let, let's, let's talk about what the Quran says, right. not about Muslims. Say. Okay. What does the Quran say? And okay, I've given you four, four senses that the Quran okay. talks about corruption. Was, okay, the first question would be, was there an original yes. uh, Torah? We, we, we all agree okay. on so then, Moses existed, he right. received the Torah from God. So then, the next question was, there was textual corruption at some point. Right. I'll briefly go through the four senses that I, as a non-scholar, I could be wrong, so I'm wel welcome, Nazam, to correct me if I get it wrong. The four senses that I understand the Quran is talking about this. One is uh, that the Jews orally corrupted it, ta ta tarif as it's called. Uh, and and this, uh, Paul, Paul, his own actions certainly come within this definition, where they verbally misquote or obscure or put their hands over passages. We know this from the narrations yes. at the time that right. they did this, yeah? Yes. Another sense is, um, is, is actual textual corruption. Absolutely right. Tarif and Nast is also included in that. Uh, so we, so we, my, we, my question was then, uh, when did the, that part? Uh, the, and the Babylonian and, exiles, were, they, were the Jews in Judea, were they in possession? The remaining Jews, were they in possession of a scroll? Can, can I just finish up this? Sure. The, uh, because there were four points. The third one is, according to the Quran, as an allegation made against the Christians as well, mm -hmm. uh, is that they have forgotten forgotten a good part of what they were taught to, to, to remember and to teach. So there's been a forgetting of the revelation as well, which is another form of corruption in my view, because you no longer have the complete version of the revelation. If people have just discarded it, forgotten it, it's no longer part of our collective memory. That's also a really important part of what I would call, you may disagree, I call that corruption. We no longer have the original text. That matters a great deal. The Quran claims repeatedly to be a muhaymin, like a quality control over the, the, the text that Jews and Christians do have and, and to be, and to, and to be um, have guardianship over it. So it can tell you where, where these texts say the Bible teaches something. We know that it's true if it conforms with what the Quran says. If it contradicts what the Quran says as the final pristine, uncorrupted, unlost revelation, then we know what the Bible says is a corruption. This is the fourth way, okay? That we can tell when it's false or corrupted when it disagrees with what the Quran explicitly teaches. So for example, the the Quran says, in my understanding, you correct me if I'm wrong, that Jesus was not crucified. Although it appeared to them, the Jews, that he was. And what, the, what does Baal Ayman say about that? Because you appealed to him earlier on as he's a sort of authority. What's his opinion on the crucifixion? I, I, as, a, as a secular atheist historian who does not believe in revelation, he thinks that Jesus was crucified. Yes, right. absolutely. Okay. So do you accept that? No. So why should I accept Because I'm using my own critical judgment here. Okay. I don't slavishly follow scholars when I agree right. with them but you or when they don't agree with them. To, to make an objection to me. Do, do, do you know, because as God... He was, as if he was... My answer to that is, and it's not an answer he would accept. My answer to that is, God knows better than Bar Ehrman. Okay, God so knows why better you, than Bar Ehrman. Why are you giving Ehrman. me Bar Ehrman as an authority? That's my whole Because point. on the specific question of manuscripts, right. he's a textual critic. That's his expertise. He was on the NRSV committee. He worked there with, uh, uh, so, you know, so, so it's just, Bruce Metzger, so, who was so, the most, one of the most so greatest textual scholars. 
God trumps Bart Ehrman every time. Okay. Bart Ehrman may be the most brilliant human being who's ever lived, okay. but he's second to God. Okay. God knows better than Bart Ehrman. Do you know why? Because God is timeless and has a perfect apprehension of everything that's happened in the, in the universe. Bart Ehrman is a fallible human being. And he has said, by the way, let me quote Bart Ehrman to you on this subject. He says, historical uh, judgments are probabilities. Mm. We cannot know with certainty, they're probabilities. And yeah. he's right. They, they are probabilities, they're right. historical reconstructions. So he doesn't know for certain. God knows for certain because God knows everything. He's omniscient. That's so, my reply. Just think, yeah. so, can I ask you this quick? I'm just going to ask more about this. Do you believe do you at the just, time, um, do you believe at the time of your prophet that Jews were corrupting the, <clears throat> the Torah either verbally or both verbally and Actually, okay. And, and the reason why, and you hear the question I would have asked you, but you had a different opinion. Is it's essentially because we do have, for example, the Dead Sea Scrolls and like textual. But the Dead Sea Scrolls are not the same as our modern Bibles right. so in many so, important ways. So when we get, when look we at get, Jeremiah, for example. Yeah, but when we get to establish, for example, what their proximity would be, my question would be: Do we find those alleged changes of the Jews in any of the texts? Because we have some stability, even if it was. If we don't have stability. So um, yes, we do. No, because in terms of the Masoretic text was one of the greatest finds because it highlights the stability of the Torah, which no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. But that's why it was a. No, it, why, that's why it's such absolutely, a significant absolutely find. Absolutely, it doesn't. Which Torah are we talking about? Why? No, why do you privilege yeah, the Masoretic? Over the, the Pentateuch, <laughs> yep. over saying, the Dead Sea Scrolls. I'm there are saying, many, but, and there are also many scholars, but there are additional Torahs lost. My, my question is essentially the same. Because if a Muslim believes that the Jews were textually corrupting the yep. Torah at the time, do we find those textual corruptions in any of the manuscripts that we have? No, I, the, I, well, that's because a, we should find, like, from the sixth century, seventh century. See, it depends what you mean by textual corruption. I've given yeah. you examples where the, even the, the we give an example of Paul corrupting the Torah, by the way, uh, which is a really important issue because he actually literally distorted and changed the words, which is what the Quran accused the Jews of. It, it, but, 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 but it actually says that in the Paul, Quran. Again, said I've said te my argument is textual corruption. So as Paul is saying, yes, he's gone to the uh, gone to the Sanhedrin, open up the, the Torah, and change the text. No, he didn't do that. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Absolutely. Okay. Shall we look at examples? Give me. We'll, we'll, we'll go through the examples. The one I repeat given you but because you, what he's saying is Paul can, would write can, the, the, can, I, the, can I give you an example the example I've given which I really Paul's would love lessons, to go into detail Paul, yeah but you're saying Paul would write his letters and misquote the no 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 is different I said when he when you, you multiple times mm -hmm. when he quotes the Old Testament you must have done this Where's he you must have the done Old this Testament? I challenge anyone here in his if you look up Paul's quotes from the Old Testament in in, hang on a second in Paul's letters, when he quotes Thank in the you. Old Testament... that's not the Torah. Will you let me finish? When he quotes in the Old Testament, the Torah, repeatedly he misquotes it. He changes the words. That is corruption of the text. Because it's different from... Do you know what I mean? Well, the one, the, one, the one example I gave, another one, from no, Hebrews chapter 11. But do you believe that Paul corrupted the Bible? If it's like Paul. No. Well, but this, this is more interesting because... It, well, you know the example. The other one is Romans 11. The, but but, but uh, Nazem, who's a walking... Can we look at the text that Paul... Uh, uh, misquoted yeah, and compared yeah, yeah we will then let's like, look yeah, at an example and would demonstrate how Christians have stored Jews in the name of Paul who's the most famous Jew of the first century after Jesus mm. how he actually physically distorted and changed the Torah he with what was changing the Torah or what was I, he changing? I, I can't look at his psychological motivation no, no, no. when I say that I mean the text that you're referring to what was the change let's look at the change we're going to look at examples now the no, making more you want to want? You want well you know you, you, you pay of the you mentioned Romans. Yes. Yeah, we've done that. We're, we're going to look at examples. Because Paul, demonstrate how yeah, a Jew actually distorted you the scriptures. You diverted from my original point. And, right. But I want to hear what he says. But we right. will go back. In Romans chapter 11, uh, verse 26, Paul allegedly uh, quotes from Isaiah 59, 20. He says, in the Romans passage, this is Paul's letter to the Romans, the deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away godlessness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. And this is to do with the gospel, as Paul claims. When you look up Isaiah 59, 20, it says the opposite. The deliverer he has completely twisted the meaning. But again, that's irrelevant of my no, point. No, it is relevant. It's a Jew quoting. I ask for evidence the Quran says. textual corruption of the Torah. Yes, not, this is textual not, corruption I'm of the Torah. I'm saying the actual, my, this is Paul's letter. 
So if he's misquoting or twisting it, yeah. I, I'm not even making that argument because that's the, my, my argument why, is why, why did Paul that, misquote it so badly? If, if he, let's well, just, why do you think? If he was misquoting, why? he's misquoting. My yeah, point but, was, but why is, when was you believe this guy's inspired possible Again, oh God, my, don't you? Yeah, but my question was, when was the, the actual Torah corrupted? Because you yeah. agreed there was an original Torah. I'm saying there are multiple corruptions and additions throughout history. Right. I, I, I've told you about so, the Dead Sea so Scrolls. Let me ask you a question. This, this what? Paul's quotation, do we find it in the Torah? Yeah. So the Torah, we've, if I if I go to the Old Testament now, do I find yes. this? He's misquoted. Oh, I, 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 no, no, no I'm saying. Well, there, there, there's, there's a, sense, there's there's a narrow Torah, which is the Pentateuch, and a broad so definition of Torah, if which is all of this. is not in the Torah, that means Paul hasn't corrupted the Torah. No, no, he's, he's misquoted. Mis right, he's misquoted. That's, not, that's not what my point was. No, my, my point, point is, my, no, but our point is that yeah, that's what the if, Quran is saying. If, if the Old Testament... If, well, yeah. you're saying a narrow but, Torah but, and a wider... But, yeah, the narrow is the first five books. They, they have money, and it has, it has a... Have hang, money hang, 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 hang on, just interrupt. Like, so the term is used in different senses. But, but the, the point they're making is a non-argument because if you could go to the Torah, that it, yeah, it would, he went back and changed. That's, that's a change change straw man in my Isaiah. point. Right? Yeah, exactly. If the change was in the Isaiah, then he's got a point. But my point is that because you can see the difference, they haven't. He oh, maybe I see. No, in that sense, yeah, you're right. But what I'm saying is the here we see an attempt to actually change the scriptures, which is exactly what the Quran accuses the people of the book of doing. We actually see an example of this in history. Now there are other examples where we can't date it precisely, but we know because we have multiple Torahs that don't all match. The Samaritan Pentateuch is not the same as the Septuagint, it's not the same as the Masoretic text. And according to scholars, there are other Torah's versions, which we may be new, for example, by uh, other writers, which we no longer have. So we don't have the Torah, just like the Quran says, that was originally given to Moses. We have different kinds of edited, corrupted, right. changed, so, forgotten, so, forgotten parts of the Torah. And this is where my argument comes in, and I can go to the Quran, where it says the prophets were the protectors of the of the Torah. Yeah, we know this. So therefore, so the, so the, the rabbis and the, and the, 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 the priests, maybe. Or yeah, I can, uh, let me bring it up. Because, because if you go to the tafsir, it also expands on that. The, 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 the you look up the eyes? I do. So therefore, if, because my point would then come to the point, if I can, yeah, I just want to look at another. corrupt Torah. Because if we have, for example, some of the scrolls and we can see the consistency in the text, because it's not wildly different. The answer that God would teach him the Torah. Or else, so that implies that Jesus learned the Torah not from the rabbis, so to speak, but he learned it from God. So, so what? So that implies it was corrupt. So, so God taught him. Say that again. That implies that the Torah was corrupt. The repeat from the beginning. Uh, because the Quran is in chapter three, uh, God would teach him the Torah. So that implies that the Torah must have been corrupt. So did Jesus God teach the people that the Torah was corrupt? Um, well, for example, when he cites the passage from 1 Samuel, um, he says Abiyafa was king. No, but I'm saying according to the so Bible. That implies that Jesus is quoting a different Torah but from what 1 Samuel 15. Yeah, but then if you're saying Jesus, but so you're conflicting two different things because you okay. just said that Allah taught him the Torah. So then if Jesus is misquoting the Torah, how could Jesus, Allah have taught him the Torah? You can't use two different things. He's not sources. misquoting it. But how do you know Jesus because misquoted the Torah? He said, Allah taught him, it? gave him the Jesus the Torah, so therefore it would be accurate. Yes. But then if you're going to the Bible and saying that Jesus misquoted, then... So, so, so the gospel writers are not eyewitnesses okay. of Jesus' ministry anyway. I'm, I'm I'm using your... Jesus disagrees. Yeah, but so Jesus of the gospel disagrees with the, the Torah that we have present. Yeah, but I'm more referring a different version of that. You know when he says, I'm, uh, I'm a Abiyafa, 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 Abiyafa was high priest at yes, the time yes. when David oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you look at the Torah, it doesn't actually say that. It's yeah. someone else. So, it, it, so who's, who's getting it wrong here, the Torah or Jesus? So I'm appealing yeah, yeah. to the Quran. Yeah. So I, that's why I'm asking these can, questions. Can I, can I show you an example so where... where me, can I just move my okay, point? Because yeah. I think you've lost my point. My point was, and if you want me to bring up the reference, is like my point was the Quran says that the prophets were the protectors of, including the rabbis. It say that, well, where does it, it say, say that? that? In the tafsir, you said in the commentary. Yeah. Can, can, you, can, you, can you quote the meaning of it? Can you quote from the Quran mean. itself and not your memory of what it might have said? Do you want me to get the, come on. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I've just asked you to do. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'm going to share with you the actual quote from uh, what is traditionally seen as a letter of Paul. He 
Hebrews chapter 10, not 11, I got the chapter wrong, but the example is there. For according to the author, for this reason, when, when he came into the world, he said, this is Jesus, sacrifice you did not desire but a body you have prepared for me right so according to uh, and this is a quote uh, from the psalm psalm 40 verse 6 to 8 uh, but this is a quote from the Greek translation, all right? So this is the incarnation of Jesus. A body you prepared for Jesus. The Son had a body uh, had a body prepared for him. Now, as this Bible, this is a Christian Bible, by the way, produced in the United States. As this Bible itself admits, this is cited according to the Septuagint, yeah. But if you look at the, um, the original reference in Psalm 40, can you see where it is there? Yeah, Psalms 40 verse 6 to 8, according to the subject of there, so, yeah. there we go. The original says, the Masoretic text, yeah, the Hebrew says, instead of saying, a body you prepare for me, it has ears you have dug for me. Ears that you have dug for me. That's what the original Hebrew says. But this Christian writer has twisted the meaning. And if you look at James Barr, he's professor of Hebrew at Oxford, he discusses this passage as one of the world's experts. And, and he says, in his view, that the translator has made a mistake. And as Hebrew, as he's an expert in the Hebrew and the Greek, he can see where the author has made an error in the translation. But the point is that the, this passage, which supports the incarnation of Jesus, is fake. It's not real. It's a mistranslation. So, so, no, no, because I've got to go back to my original okay, okay, point. So, I'm asking you a question now. How do you respond to that? We're, 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 we're jumping because I said I'll. Okay, can you answer that point? I won't, and I'll tell you, you why. You won't. I'll tell you why. But you see, we're answering your question. Yeah, I'll tell you can why. Can we have a bit of to and fro I'll here? Tell you why. Can you, for once, answer one of our why. questions? I will tell you can why. Can you answer I one of our questions? I will, I, why I will won't you respond? You, yeah, let, let me speak. Well, respond then. Can I speak? Yes. Okay, I'm telling you why I won't respond first because you asked me to read the verse. So I'm going to read the verse first okay. that you asked me to find. Okay, fair enough. Okay. And then you'll respond to that, right. yes? I missed it because I was looking for the well, verse. I'll repeat it. Okay, I had to repeat because it to you. I had a question for you. Well, you see, well, I'm, so not, I'm in the middle of a discussion. Now, let me sorry. read the verse that he asked me to read. And then you'll it just says, address this one. Indeed, we sent down the Torah in which was a guidance and light. The prophets who submitted to Allah judged by it for the Jews. And as did the rabbis and scholars by that which, which they were entrusted of the scripture. So here again, I'll just read it again. Indeed, we sent down the Torah in which was a guidance and light. The prophets who submitted to Allah judged by it for the Jews, as did the rabbis and scholars by that were interested of the scripture of Allah and this is from Sahih International. So it doesn't say the prophets uh, were given that task, that's not how I read it. That's not what you claimed it said at all. So the prophet, yeah, if you, if I said I'll go into the tafsir as well. No, no, but, just no, I want you to look at the passage. Right. That, so, okay. what, what you've just said, so that says, start, is not right, what you claim. Right, let's start with the of the text. Indeed, we sent down the Torah, in which was a guidance and light. The prophets who submitted to Allah judged by it for the Jews. So the, the, now, I, I don't understand that English. Can, can we have another translation? Have you got no, another one? Yeah. No, I don't. The English is very poor. The translation is okay, not very good. You, I'll give you pick and pick. No, pick don't, don't give me pick That's a Victorian which translation. Which one do you like? Which any mo any modern translation? Yusuf Ali. Yeah, I've got a modern. Uh, here we are. We'll, we'll go with that one. Yusuf Ali. No, that's not. That's the, the 1930s. Oh that's exactly 100 Jack, years ago. Look at his original. Can we have a modern Jack translation? Here. Come on. Oh. We, we would choose the translation. Oh, the Let's use a modern translation rather than these so archaic. Whose Bible did you read from? Because you picked that as well. <laughs> this is a modern Bible. This is a modern Bible. Such, which translation do you like? We, we've got one. Do you want to read it out now? Which, uh, which translation is it? It's a modern one. Okay. Uh, truly, uh, we set down the Torah, mm -hmm. wherein is guidance and light, uh, by which the prophets who submit submitted unto God judge those who are Jews as did the sages and the rabbis is that any in accordance with such read? of God, sorry, sorry. Uh, do, you, do you know what? Please read a different sorry, version because people said he didn't understand that which is exactly yeah, okay. what I sorry, read I, I was interrupting. So please Can go we... to a modern 
no, because he, he, he put his hand over. Yeah, I was okay. trying to read it. He, he <laughs> interviewed. Because he said he didn't understand. I, I didn't understand exactly your translation. It's exactly the same. Can we can we just back off for a second? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's with it. Oh, okay. I understand it now. Someone using the New Testament. That's a different discussion. But that's a different discussion. Yeah, but that's a different discussion. I have a question. It doesn't relate to what you we're all laymen here, but we're having a debate. No, my, so, my topic yeah, can I, can I, why does this matter? Okay. But you're a Christian. Well, I don't know whether you yeah, are, yeah, alright. I don't know whether you are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to you. That's so great. now, how do you no, no, interpret no, no, no. that right. first? Um, I, I don't know. I need to reflect on it further. It says that rabbis and the sages so were given the responsibility yeah. of preserving the Bible. I don't understand why the prophets were judging by it. Yeah, but it doesn't say that so they were responsible. It doesn't say what you claimed. You misrepresented, like Christians seem to do on the text. But as I said, but yeah, again, I'd like to see what the Tafsir actually right. says. Okay, yeah. but I'll go into the Tafsir. But my point was, it says the book was sent down, the Torah was sent to Moses, which the judge it prof uh, judged by. Yeah. So that means you had the continuity, which would have gone all the way to Jesus. So it said, if you had the book from Moses, there's a continuity of something called the Torah, which went all the way to. to but what is your point? Jesus. I don't understand why this is significant. Because you keep so, going so, on so what? and I keep trying to explain. Then you keep going to Paul, and what, then you're asking me what. No, I'm asking you to explain. Explain why this is significant. Right. I don't so see what's the point. Significance is if we can actually stick to the topic no, no, and well, not go on tangents about the New Testament. No, I'll get to my point. No, no, can, can no I because because my point was can, can I respond to, to this? Half an hour. Get, get, because my point was this. My first question was. We've been at this did for the half Jews, an hour. I'd like him to answer. Did the Jews corrupt the, uh, the yeah. Torah at I've the answered time that. I've answered I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm starting from the beginning, so we stay on track with what my point was. Yeah. So then after you said no, and he said yes, I, I said, I said there were four to, senses in the Quran, yeah, as I understand right. it. Then I then said in the Quran, it yeah. talks about, because I was talking about this verse, but I didn't bring it up. So I was trying to reference this verse yeah. to say this yeah, verse I know, but we know, we know all this. Uh, moving right. forward. So therefore, my <laughs> point was, when we have things like... Yeah. The Dead Sea Scrolls, yes, yes. For example, and we see a continuity in the text. No, we don't. The Masoretic text. Well, I disagree. Stability. I disagree. And okay. you failed to prove that. You said 99% is identical. Right. I asked him to do it, and he's failed to provide any citation I, to I, a single I, I'll, scholar. I'll do some fact checking. So, so right. you, 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 right. you can't claim that. Right. You've not backed up your and claim. Please find if there's the differences as well. If it's wildly different as what Paul said. Well, I said some differences uh, in some books, but not in others. My right. claim is nuanced. Don't straw man. Right, so you don't know? <laughs> I do know. No, in terms of the consistency of the Masoretic text. I do, text. but I, I don't want to go into that. I want to go into my New Testament text. So, yeah, but I uh, had a, let, let, me, let me respond now. Yeah, but Can my, I say something? You've been talking a lot in the last 10 minutes. You asked me what my point is. Now you don't want to hear my point. No, I heard your point. What was my point? Right, let me speak now. Right. Yeah, but what's my point? You asked for the clarification. Paperboy, can you just back off and not interrupt for five seconds? Uh, can you do that for five seconds? You said you know my point. I do. Which is what? And we've answered it in great detail. What is my point? And, excuse me. Now, I would like... You have to tell us your point. Now, exactly. That's my whole point. He doesn't know my point. I do your point. You what repeated it. it. But I would like you to address my question. Has he you promised my... that you would address my question once you had read that verse. If you know my you point, read that verse. then you can just say what my point was. No, I'm not, I'm not going to play your game and parrot what you want me to say. No. My question is, no, why, you're why did... You're why trying to go on a red, can, red can you, herring. It's not a red herring. Yes, it is. Cru I mean, let me explain why it's not a red herring. Let me explain why. Let me explain. Shh, let me explain. The accusation, this is very much germane, about the Quran's claim that he is repeatedly, repeatedly referenced that the, the Jews corrupted the text of the New Testament. Or they twisted it with their with their with their words. Right. It's multiple senses of tarif. It's not just one sense, it's multiple senses. And one of those senses is clearly in the Bible, in Romans chapter 9, which I read out just now, where Paul, a Jew in the first century, twisted the Torah exactly exactly like the Quran says some Jews did. There's an actual example we can verify. No one doubts that Paul exists. No one doubts that they did. He's defeating hang, hang on a second. Well. No, I'm not. Because Paul is saying Paul misquoted the Torah. Yes. How does he know Paul wasn't uh, quoting the original Torah that you believe in? Would you like me to answer that? No, 
point. No, 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 let me answer. Look, he's, he thinks he's made a good point here. Paul was a Greek-speaking Jew from Tarsus. He spoke Greek. All his letters are in Greek. He quotes from the Septuagint. That's the Bible he's quoting. Not from the Jewish Bible, not the Torah, not the Hebrew Bible. But how do you the know original. Because Paul... Excuse me, hang on a second. Because from your end, but he's actually... Paul hang on a second. Let me finish, let me finish. Is there was an original. So I'm saying yes, then, if there we was an original, how do you know Paul wasn't quoting? the original wasn't in Greek, Paul was, was it? not it quoting from the original. We know but that we know because Paul, hang on, historically, dude, dude, let me finish. We know Paul's not quoting the original because he's quoting from the Septuagint. If you don't believe me, see what um, the scholars here say. This is the NRSV, which is the main that, that, academic that, translation. That it has no, no value for you. Yeah, that doesn't help. Okay, it says Paul quotes from the Septuagint. The author follows the Septuagint mm. text. So he's not quoting from the Hebrew original anyway. But what he does, even in the How even in the corrupted version, he changes that. But this is the point. How does he know what's in the original? Because the Hebrew, because the Hebrew Bible that existed at the time of Paul, okay. like the Masoretic text, right. is different from the Septuagint. But how do you know the Masoretic is in the original? How do we know that it is? So you're, okay. make, you're making explain. a claim okay. that it's changed. Okay. So that's me, why I'm saying your me, point is a non let me, No, no, it's not. Let me explain because how. you would have to say... I, I know the answer now. Right, okay. Go we'll go back to this. Mm. The Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, are believed by... You believe they're written by Moses, don't you? Well, they were authored by Moses. Well, yeah. that's what I just said. Same yeah. thing. That's the yeah. same thing, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, Moses lived, what, 2000 BC, 2500 BC? Yeah. Would you be happy with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? But say 2000, to be generous. 2000 BC. That's 4,000 years ago, right? What's the oldest copy of the Old Testament that we have in the world that exists today? What's the dating of that, do you think? What's the oldest? Copy of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, which Moses authored, according to you, I don't think he did, but according to you, the one we have is not authored by him. What's the earliest dating of the extant Torah that we have? The full extant? Yep. Earliest dating? Uh, off the top of my head. I know, for example, we have uh, fragments of things, or not fragments, but for example, things, we have the uh, silver amulet. It's the Dead Sea Scrolls, by Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying. We What's have the date of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Is about 2nd century BC. Thank you. Right. Exactly right. So, remember what you just said? Oh, you okay. No, 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 just follow, let's follow this line of thought through very carefully. Okay. You have agreed that Moses lived about 2000 or even earlier right. BC. The earliest copy of that space, Pentateuch, we have, he thinks, in existence is 200 BC. Right. Do you notice the gap? What it's is the gap? gap? gap. My, my, no, the, right. my maths isn't very good. How many centuries is that, Nazan? Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Sorry? Roughly. 18. 18. 1,800 years gap between the time of Moses, which he said is the time of Moses, and the earliest copy of the Torah like we have. Civilization. One had one 1,800 centuries. Now, are you telling me that this was passed down accurately? for one need two millennia without any changes, any corruptions, any alterations. The thing is, we just don't know. We can have no confidence, right. no zero confidence that the Torah we have today goes back to Moses right. because we have no history. So we have no Islam, nothing. An, so that means he doesn't know whether it is or isn't the original. Is we do, no, we do. Don't. No, I'll tell you how. If you said you I tell you don't how. know, therefore you cannot we, say We know with certainty. Right. I make that claim with certainty. Right. The claim is clear. When the, top, when the Quran tells the story of Moses or, 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 or any of the prophets when it does do sometimes this is the speech of God himself who being a perfect a omniscient being it's knows a, exactly what really happened and let me, let me finish because you asked me how do we know when the Torah sorry, we have differs with the, what the Quran says about that, the story of Moses we know that the Quran, Quran says we know the Torah has been corrupted because the real story is in the Quran that's how we do co-editor of Oxford's encyclopedia Dead Sea Scrolls says, if the Masoretic version is the one and only true Old Testament, then the Dead Sea Scrolls are extremely good news for Bible believers, Jewish or Christian. The Masoretic manuscripts among the Dead Sea Scrolls are astonishingly similar to the standard Which Hebrew text 1,000 years Thank later. You. Thank you very much. You Proving that Jewish scribes were accurate in preserving and Well, Bart Ehrman says very... Uh, okay. Sorry, who's this woman? Who's the same Bart Ehrman that uh, says there was a crucifixion. Lawrence Schiffman of New York University, co-editor right. of Oxford's Encyclopedia of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, Bart Ehrman, thank you for that quote. Bart Ehrman. Can you show the Bart Ehrman quote? Uh, Bart, uh, um, Please, can you show the Bart Ehrman quote?
okay, okay. Bottom one moment, please. No, no, you asked me for no. a specific quote. Okay, I will in a minute. I will right. in a minute. But in the meantime, I want you to address. I don't want you to get away with this because I know you want to divert the subject yes, away. If, if, if we have the Torah right. that you said was given to Moses 2000 or longer BC, yeah. and the earliest copy of the Torah you admit yourself is just two centuries BC, how can you know or any that the Torah we have now is not being changed or corrupted in any way? There's 1,800 years difference according to your own calculation. Right. How would you address that? Well, there's two ways of addressing that. So one, it then removes the claim that Paul can make and say there was an original Torah because by his own word, he doesn't know either. So therefore, when we look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, firstly, he will say before, but at least we can see a, a stability in the text from 2 BC until the, the Masoretic text, which is about 10th century. So a thousand year period, there's a very, very small disagreement which Paul says actually forms a bottom and there was loads. So in terms of... Uh, there are. Long uh, time. Exactly. So now he's talking about 2,000 years. C coming back so, to the 2,000 so year gap so in, now, in records, so now, how do we know it's so, reliable? So now, in terms of the reliability, yeah. in terms of the, the text, can we know if there were uh, any changes? He just asked you, what do you think? No, yeah. how do we know? Yeah, that? Know, how can we know a text which right. allegedly was transmitted without any evidence for nearly 2,000 right. years so this is where, it was preserved reliably so, and authentically right. intact? So, how can we so know that? Is my of, question to in you. In terms of what the Bible, the, when I say the Bible, the Old Testament narrates, yeah. oh, right, we have something you. called historic, historical criticism, which the Quran doesn't have. Now, we then look at the reliability of some of the stories that it uh, relays. So, for example, we it makes claims about David. We find uh, archaeological. Is there a system to doing this? No, in terms of the text, or just every individual yeah. chooses. Talking about to manuscripts, no, the, there's no manuscript evidence for nearly two thousand yeah. years. Wait, How wait, can we know it's reliable? Yes. Right. And so he says I'm we saying, can. So I'm saying this in terms of the textual re reliability, because we don't have anything earlier, we have nothing to compare it to. Right. So therefore, so we can't know. We can only base it on the evidence that we do have. Well, whatever. And when is we that? have the dead. Sea scrolls which he quoted to no, the Masoretic that, that's text, just 200 which is a thousand BC. year which is a thousand year period yeah. and he, as he said it's the, the, the similarity is ex almost exactly the same very similar in the text so we see a stability uh, but um, doesn't agree with so, that so, so that's why I said if if the uh, Jews were corrupting the Torah in the time of your prophet but we have a text that is stable where were those changes in those cor in, in the Torah at that time we don't see it in them okay. in, in the, the Masoretic text we see a stable in the text, so therefore, what you, the claims in the Quran are don't ally to reality or what we find archaeologically. Now, in terms of the reliability of the uh, Bible, we also have things like archaeological evidence that validate many of the claims that it states. For, for example, for for example it, let me finish. No, no, let me finish. What about Moses, for example? Finish. What archaeological evidence do you have about Moses? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just finish on yeah, one point and I'm just going to show you guys something. Also, it doesn't, you you haven't really addressed the question. Yeah, I, I said I said we don't have a we don't have we don't have a method of finding out have, what because we don't have anything earlier. Okay. We, we, we've got nothing to verify. It. But I said then the secondary method nothing to verify. is to look so at we can't know. It's quite a big. It's a lot. Okay, we have nothing to we have verify. So we can't know what the original is. And the Masoretic we can't know what it is. About, uh, game, game over. Game over. Ten, ten uh, AD, thousand year period, and they're saying the text is very similar. Maybe a few minor differences. No, there's some big differences. Because big differences. It shows a textual uh, stability uh, text. Okay, let me, let me respond to that now. Let me respond to that now. Uh, the reason this is faulty is if, if many reasons. One is that uh, particularly in the medieval period, um, Jewish scholars became uh, very organized as scribes, as translators, as copyists in, in guilds. And they became quite good at copying manuscripts in the later period of the Jewish era. So I'm not surprised that in the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th century, 11th century AD, you do have a reliable transmission uh, because you had these professionalization of the scribes and copying. But you can't, and this is why, why you're saying is invalid, you can't then, you can't say, because it happened in the late medieval period, if we go back to 1000 BC or 1500 BC, right. you, hang on. We do have you, a fragment. You, you, you well, have, it's not a fragment. We have not, the, I haven't finished yet. Yeah, I haven't finished yet. You, you can't then say, because they were professional guilds in the Middle Ages, therefore we can use that and say, throughout Jewish history, it's always been like that. No, it wasn't. In the earlier century, there wasn't this reliable transmission right. and, and, it, uh, yeah, and, yeah, uh, and yeah. coming back to the second point is 
it's bad news, unfortunately, for you. If you're going to rely on historical criticism, and I tell you, when I was at university it's, studying this... It's bad news for him because his claim no, no. is there was an original I, I, I haven't, so the, Can the, you let the me finish? The is on the let person making the claim no, let me finish. that there was an original. You, you're saying historical criticism somehow backs up your claim. It doesn't. According to most Western historians, Moses didn't even exist. Okay. He's a fictional character. According, there's no... The fact remains, and I take no pleasure in this, there is no archaeological evidence whatsoever for right. Moses' existence. Right. Zero for Abraham, or in fact for most of the early prophets. Also, there's no evidence that Moses or Israel was ever in uh, Egypt the way the Bible describes it. So there is no evidence right. for this, no, apart me... from the Bible, which has a two, nearly 2,000 year gap between right. the earliest yeah, manuscripts yeah, and the stories it allegedly describes. This is a huge I don't gap. Think he wants to acknowledge the gap. I yeah. No, he doesn't. And Mind the gap. As you see in London Underground, so mind the gap. Person, mind the gap. He made some points. So now, in terms Archaeology. of the system yeah, that held wait, on to the authenticity wait, wait. Now, now, during that 1800 years. Thank you. Years. That's now, all he wants to know. Yes. According, what, what did you have holding it in place? Thank, thank you. Quran, this is an excellent question. It was the prophets. That's Not the Quran. You don't believe in the Quran. You don't believe in the Quran. Argue from your own view. This is why. Don't talk. You're a Christian. Let me, let, me, Moscow, let me make my point. It. This is why his arguments go against his own beliefs. I'm asking for historical now, reasons. No, wait, 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 you don't believe wait, in the Quran. Let me, let me, now let me address the historical part. Thank now, you. For example, not everything in history is um, is provable. There are some things that are hidden in history like Moses. But we have found something recently which is actually greater than the Dead Sea Scrolls. And that's the cursed tablets from Man Ibao. Now if you don't know about I it... I don't know. This well, is let, not proving we're, we're, a system. Yeah, but, no, no, yeah, but let, let's see what this great evidence is before we... Let's see what this great evidence is. Remember we got a uh, point of 1,800 right. years with no right. textual transmission now, at all. And he says it's still reliable. So I'm addressing the, 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 the archaeological So what is the evidence? Because so now, Mount Ebal was where Joshua went, and Joshua was the companion of Moses. Now it says, inscribed on the tablet of Agan Led, the curse in proto-Canaanite script was a legal document, says a team that deciphered it using high-tech scanners. So it says, oh, let me just show you. What's this got to do with the manuscript, manuscript transmission yeah, of 1,800 no, years? Said, firstly, I'm, not wait, 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 yeah, yeah, wait, I'm not denying Moses existed. I'm not denying Joshua existed. Me, I'm saying me finish my your point. text does not support I, I listened to you yeah, and then is, I responded. But this is not really helpful. I listened to you. It's not really right. It doesn't matter. You're not I'm I'm let me let me let me land and then respond. Land, like so land it says, it's a nice metaphor. It says, coming in. The discovery of a cursed tablet has unleashed an archaeological earthquake and could be a key clue in proving when and who truly wrote the Bible. The folded lead tablet, which contains a curse on the inside, was discovered on Mount Ebal in the Holy Land. A place associated with curses in the Bible. Do you believe there was a curse in there? Yeah, let me finish. It has been dated between 1200 and 1400 BC and features the Hebrew word for God, Yahweh, in what could be the earliest ever appearance. If the dating is correct, it may prove that the Israelites were literate when they entered the Holy Land and enabled to document the Bible events as they happened. Archaeologic, archaeologist Scott Spritz, uh, Stripling said it's extremely important. Some are describing this as the most important find of our lifetime because it predates anything we have before regarding the Hebrew, Hebrew script. Now the reason why I'm bringing this year, right? yeah, it was discovered this year. So the reason why I'm bringing it in is because his claim is that one, in terms of uh, textual preservation, so I've already said we don't have anything earlier in terms of saying there's a consistency in the text and I've conceded that. I've then said, well, the only other thing we can do to look at the text preservation is look at the other thing we have which is the Dead Sea Scrolls from the second century BC that's not and the Masoretic. That's not yeah, a system. Yeah, that's but, not, that's yeah, just but an object. Again, but but, but, that point. Yeah, but the, again, my point is it, then you would have to concede that there seems to be from the observable evidence. It's not evidence, about us conceding, it's about yeah, you yeah, making your again, point. But again, let me make my point. My point is if we have evidence mm. and from the evidence we can observe there is a preservation or stability of the text, the fact that you're claiming that it has changed. Maybe I cannot prove it hasn't changed, but you can neither prove it has changed either, which was his point. So my initial question so to him 
proves it hasn't been changed. Right. Can, we, can we just remember this in camera? He cannot, you cannot claim that it hasn't been changed. That's that this means, point. this is a really important point, right. you can have no confidence but, in the reliability but, and but trustworthiness is, of your scriptures because you cannot know that they've not been changed. Him, Game over. With the, with the I've established my point. No, because Thank I, you very much I, for your time. Is, I'm going. You can go. That's Thank you. Fine. Uh, that's all we